Check, check one, two, check one, two, three, can you hear me? Awesome. Today is our first day of Withstander Academy and I'm your host, Pastor Jeremiah Green. We're gonna be covering a lot of topics and I'm so glad to be taking this journey with you. I'm glad you're joining us online, of course, you don't have much of an option, <laughs> but it's okay because we're going to have fun anyway. Somebody say amen. So today our focus is going to be on hope. Hope. H-O-P-E. Say that with me. H-O-P-E. And of course, if you stay on for the 1130 service, you're going to learn a lot more. But this session is for kids. And kids, I hope you're ready because we are about to go on a journey. We're going on a journey and it's especially designed for you. Before we begin, what we're gonna do today and what we're gonna do every day is pray. Bow your heads with me and let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the children that are watching this program. I pray that they will hear your voice and draw closer to you. I pray today that if any of them have lost their hope, that they will find it. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to have a craft, and the craft is going to teach a lesson about hope. But before we have our craft, I'm going to tell you a little story. There was a teacher who walked into the classroom, and she saw all of the students were very sad, and she wanted to teach them a lesson about hope. So she went to her file cabinet and she pulled out a piece of paper and then she went to her drawer and she pulled out a pair of scissors. And she asked the children, she said, children, is it possible to cut this paper so that there is a hole in the paper so that you can walk through the hole? The children laughed and laughed and laughed. They thought the teacher was telling a joke. They said, no. That's not possible. That's never possible. And some of the children actually took their scissors. Now, I have some adult scissors. You should probably have some little kitty scissors. And you should probably ask your parents if you can do this craft at home as well. So they took their kitty scissors put their hands in their kitty scissors and started cutting holes, cutting holes in and trying to walk inside the paper. 
And all of the children said, that's not possible. Say it with me. That's not possible. Now remember, the teacher wanted to teach the children about hope. So she told them, never stop believing. All things are possible. You just need to know how. And they laughed and laughed at their teacher. Ha, ha, ha. Why don't you try to laugh? Ha, ha, ha. That's a funny laugh. They laughed at their teacher, but their teacher was not laughing. She was not laughing. So the teacher asked a question. Would you like for me to take my scissors and my sheet of paper, this paper right here, and cut a hole inside it and walk through it? And of course, the class said, yes, show us if that is possible. So the teacher did. And I'm going to do it for you today because some of you don't believe it is possible. But it is. Watch me. I'm going to play a little music because it might take a little while for me to do this. So let's play a little music now. Today I want to tell you a story about how Hopeless Hope found God's hope. Hope was a happy little sheep. She loved being in her pen. Her master treated her like she was a queen. 
and she knew it. She could go wherever she wanted to go. As curious as she was, she explored every part of her pen. Of course, there was only one condition, that she couldn't go outside of the pen. But she had enough okay. green grass okay. to last her okay. many years okay. and hopeless hope okay. enjoyed okay. all okay. of her freedom. She danced and pranced and prayed and stayed in her pen, praising God every day. But one day, hopeless hope noticed that the wow. gate when she saw it, she said to herself, oh, I can go outside and do whatever I want to do outside the pen. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. I'm going to explore. Goodbye. And sure enough, Hopeless Hope explored everything that she could get her hands on. She looked and looked and looked until finally she came to an area she had never even seen before. Oh, she wanted to go down there, but she knew it might be dangerous for her. She waited. She said, oh, should I go? Should I go? And sure enough, the idea came in her head, I'm going to go. So, Hopeless Hope ran down the hill, and she looked at all the things that she could find. But then she realized, wait, I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going. Hopeless Hope tried to find her way back, but she didn't know where to go. She heard the dogs barking. They were trying to help her, but she didn't know where the sound was coming from. And she knew that her master had told her to stay inside because there was danger out. And she was frightened. Finally, she stopped and gave up hope. I don't know where I am. I'll never find my way back. Oh, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? She kept looking, but the more she looked, the more lost she got. And then she heard the sound. She heard the sound. Oh, she had given up all hope because she knew this was the last time she would ever see her master. And she paused to see what she could do. At this time, Hopeless Hope heard the sound of the wolf in sheep's clothing. She knew that there was no way that she could fight off the wolf. Her master had told her stories over and over again of how it was, how important it was for him to save her from the wolf in sheep's clothing. The wolf was celebrating because he knew that if he found the sheep, they were defenseless. He was on the prowl and he had a plan. He was hungry and he would soon find some sheep to eat. He would hide here. He would hide there. He would hide here and there and everywhere. He knew that it was just a matter of time before some lost sheep lost her way and he would have food for the day. And all of a sudden, 
He heard it. He heard the sheep that was lost, and he was ready to eat. Now, of course, this story ends very well. No, the wolf in sheep's clothing did not get hopeless hope. Her master came and rescued her. You see, that's why we have hope, because our master rescues us as well, even when we've gone astray. He loves us so much that he comes and searches after us. He finds us and he carries us on his shoulder and he takes us back to our home. And we can live happily ever after. And that's exactly what Hopeless Hope did. But she was no longer called Hopeless Hope. Her name just became Hope. Keep Hope. That's our message for today. It's a very simple message. Keep hope alive. Never let go of your hope, especially because we believe in God who can do all things. Now, I want to do one more thing with you before we leave today, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to do it each week. It's called the Withstander Chant. Please repeat after me. I am a withstander. I must go where Jesus sends me. I'm not afraid of the enemy because I have my armor on. I will be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. I am a withstander. I am a withstander. That's right. If you remember who you are, you can never be defeated because you have power in Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day. You know, I, I wanted to get into, you know, th th this concept of hope because the reason I wanted to have this conversation with you was because I just happened to call you uh, last Friday night and we were just having a conversation and it was so edifying and encouraging to me that I felt like, man, it would be great if other people you heard this because, again, it seems like COVID-19 is really started to take people's hope. There's, 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 not, there's not just a depression um, but there's a lack of hope that has taken place. And so talk to me a little bit about how do you think it is? Why do situations like this take away people's hope? Like, what is it about this situation that kind of sucks sure. the hope out of this? Uh, well, I think that uh, it's the unexpected. You know, the unexpected and the unknown do such a, a traumatic job to our system because we are creatures of habit. We are creatures of, creatures of routine. And so we're used to what we do and how we do it. And then all of a sudden, when something is introduced that we didn't expect, that we didn't know how to handle, that we didn't even know what to deal with, it becomes very traumatic. And so as a result, in the absence of knowing what to do, that's where our hope begins to wane. 
because mm -hmm. when we can control the outcome, we have hope over it. But when we don't, we're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? So because of the unexpected, almost sudden nature of, of the virus and how it's impacted the world, that is one of the reasons why I believe our hope has been impacted, because it was unexpected. We didn't, we, we, most people don't know how to deal with it because you're not always planning for the contingency. We're mm -hmm. planning for what we know, but we aren't always planning for the things that could go wrong. And as a result, man, I think that's where our hope is being attacked. But, you know, I know we're going to get into it, but this is where, you know, our faith has to be the, the platform to support our hope. Because too often we allow our hope to go down and our faith to go down with it. And this is a you, moment you, for to rise so our hope can rise higher. And you know, man, I, I wanted to put a, a pin in that because I want to go back because we're going to break down that difference, of course, between like faith and hope and how they support each other. But I think yeah. it's something that you said. You know, I mean, you, you know, we we getting early dropping these you know these gems because it was almost <laughs> as if, and, and, and I just want you to maybe expand on this a little bit. You said as soon as like our routine was breaking up and the unexpected comes, our hope is is removed. So it's almost as if our hope has to be based on something we are in control of. Like, like it's almost like hope is we only have hope when we're in control. When we lose control, we lose hope. Is that what I hear you say? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's in part what I'm saying. So, so hope, you know, look, you're, you're a Bible scholar. I'm not right. But <laughs> hope, right. you know, in, in the Greek really means expectation. Mm -hmm. So when we can plan what we're expecting, we actually are able to have hope because we know, oh, I'm expecting to wake up tomorrow. I'm expecting to go to work. I'm expecting to go to the store. I'm wow. expecting to, you know, get paid. I'm expecting to have toilet paper. Right. So the moment those expectations are not met, that is when our hope is being challenged. Wow. And so much of our hope is being built on a routine. So as a result, most of us, if we're really being honest, we don't even live. And here's what I mean by that. Right now, if, if you were to drive from your house to Rubido, you could get there without even thinking because you're so familiar with the routine. I'm mm -hmm. sure there've been plenty of times you've been on the phone and, and driving, and all of a sudden you get to the church, you're like, how did that happen? Why? Right. Because we're on a routine and our subconscious takes over. So, so many times we aren't even living because we're on the routine of life. One of the, the benefits, and I know, I, again, I know it's a difficult thing to say, but one of the benefits of this time is that God is saying, I've got to break your routine because mm. your hope is in yourself. It's not really in me. Because if you really believed in me, you would know that I'm not going to allow something in the earth that ultimately is not going to work for my glory. So a lot of times our hope is waning because our expectations are based upon what we think we can control and what we think we can predict. Yeah, see, and, and that's the thing that I think is huge because what I, what I hear you saying, and I think this is big for us, we think it's hope because it's on something tangible, it's something that we can expect, it's our routine, but really hope needs to be able to still be in place even when those things are upset. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. moments like this are revealing uh, how much hope we have. Right. So it's so if our hope is 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 low, that's OK. That's actually it's OK for it to be revealed that our hope is low. And that's the area that we have to work to get our hope at the level of our faith. You know, because so often we're expecting God to do certain things mm -hmm. based upon what we want him to do, not necessarily based upon what he is intending to do. Yeah, so, so I love that idea, like th th this concept of hope being a certain expectation. And I remember I talked a little bit, uh, you know, about uh, when God fails. And it's so interesting because then our hope is based on our expectations that we have for God and not just expecting him to be who he is. And that might look in, in whatever way it is. And so it becomes dangerous because now our hope is based on circumstances and not a principle. Right. Right. And, and that's yeah. dangerous. Which is, right. and I'm praying anyone listening to this right now is catching this because what you just said is very dangerous because what we want to do is we want to base our hope on the things we can see. We want to base our hope on yeah, our circumstances. Dangerous. And right. here's why that's dangerous. Our circumstances are external. Mm -hmm. They will go right. up and down. So if our right. hope is dependent on what's external, we mm -hmm. never actually right. can control how we feel. 
we never can control our energy because we're always tethering it to something that's going to go up and down, which is external. This right. is why God wants to work on the inside of us out. Because if, yeah. if we really keep our hope in our spirit, our hope in him, knowing that he's not going to leave us nor forsake us, when we build our hope from an internal perspective, it helps withstand no matter what happens externally. This is why yeah. when things yeah. externally start to go wrong, it reveals internally what may be needing to, the areas we have to work on in order to get our hope up. Yeah, man, I, man, I, I think that is huge because our hope cannot be based on external circumstances. And I love that because constantly they're changing. I mean, even with this COVID-19 crisis, I mean, things are changing every hour. I mean, every moment. And the one thing that hope should be able to give us is some bit of consistency. I love that. So here's the thing I want to ask on a practical level, because some people might think they have hope, but they really maybe don't. In your opinion, your experience, um, when a person loses hope, what does that, what, what do they look like? What are some of the signs that I can look and say, okay, I think I'm losing some hope here. Is, is it a feeling? Is it the way they're walking around the house? Like, like what, is the, what does that look like when someone has lost hope? Here's the number that you can uh, look at in terms of whether or not you are losing hope. Mm -hmm. How is your feeling when you wake up in the morning? Okay. Is it hard to get out of the bed? Are you getting out of the bed motivated? Mm -hmm. Are you getting out of the bed in worry? Is it is it one of those things where you normally would get up early, but now because you're working mm -hmm. from home, you're like, you know what, I'm going to get up later. Why? Right. Because you can identify hope based upon how you get up, based upon what your expectations, your energy level. That is the telltale sign about whether or not your hope is full or whether or not your hope may be in lack. And so many people mm. overlook that. But I can always tell when my hope is low because of the energy I have when I wake up, man. You know, man, dude, yeah. there'll be some mornings. It hasn't been during this period of time. But in the past, there have been some mornings when I, I wake up and I just keep hitting the snooze button. I keep hitting the snooze button, you know, and then I wonder, mm -hmm. well, why am I doing that? Because I don't have hope for the day. I don't have hope for what God is doing. And then what happens? And this is dangerous. I'm praying anyone listening to this, 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 this call, this talk will really get this, which is when we don't have hope, we get into a what does it matter mentality. Mm. What does it matter how long I live? I mean, long, how long I live, how long I, I sleep? What does it matter if I eat food that works against my health? What does it matter if I don't yeah. do, you know, my, like the level that I could? What does it matter? And when we get to that place, that's a dangerous place to be because we can make decisions that will work against our destiny, work against who God is calling us to be. And it's really important when you find yourself, you know, it's almost like, you know, you get, you get away from the shore of your hope. You got to say, wait, I got to re-anchor myself in the Lord. I got to yeah, anchor myself yeah. in his promises in order to get myself back to a place of belief, a place of hope and a place of faith. Yeah, dude, you know, I, so, 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 so I'm sitting here looking, for example, at the people in Miami who are down there just partying like crazy. And, and, and I hear what you're saying, because a part of me was thinking to myself as well, like, man, they might don't have hope because they're saying to themselves, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get it anyway. So let's just go ahead and party and do whatever it is that we're going to do. And, and, you know, unfortunately, I think that's unwise because now you get on airplanes going back home from spring break and possibly spreading this more. But it's that it's the, I don't care. Uh, it's the aloof kind of attitude that is saying, nah, it's whatever. Because I think while there, we did say hope is an expectation, if we don't have expectations for a good future, for uh, that this yes. is going to be all right, that it is going to be okay, that's a sign that we're losing our hope as well. Yeah. Yeah, but, but also I, I would say that there's a difference between losing hope and being ignorant. Okay, okay. Yeah, get get into that a little bit. Get into that. <laughs> yeah. I think that what we saw in Florida and, uh, you know, I, I, Megan and I, we live here in Los Angeles. And as, uh, as early as this past Sunday, you know, when we were supposed to be in, you know, we went out to the store and there were people mm -hmm. in the local bars and whatnot partying and hanging out. There's ignorance in that people... Sometimes they know to do better, and it's not that they don't have hope. It's just that they're choosing to practice ignorance. <laughs> yeah, and true. I think that is this true. is so important. Don't ignore what's right in front of us. I believe all of us should be on the hunt for knowledge. What What is the way God wants us to live? How do we become the best people we can be? And how do we, when we become the best person that we can be, 
the, 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 Jesus says the commandments are summed up in this one thing, to love our neighbor as ourself. So mm -hmm. if I'm loving myself, then I have to make sure I'm doing what's in the best interest of my neighbor and myself. And so when you talk about what happened in Florida and the beaches being packed, that's just ignorance because okay, people yeah. are practicing yeah. what right. is not only in their best interest, but what's in the best interest of them, of, of their neighbor. Here's the other thing about that. Yeah. So often, and this is where a lot of the tension has been in the faith community, you know, okay, do I walk in faith and do I, you know, not worry about this virus, you know, or do I, or if I'm, if I'm mindful of the virus and I pay attention to what I'm hearing from the CDC and our local government, does that mean I'm in fear? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Uh, we're, suppo we're supposed to have wisdom. You know, uh, faith plus works is a lot. Right? Faith mm -hmm. without works is yeah. dead. So part right. of works is intelligence. It is listening to what we're being told and, and doing it. God has right. allowed so many people on the earth to have an incredible knowledge and expertise about this virus. As people mm -hmm. of faith, we should listen. And we should say, okay, I'm going to listen to the knowledge God has entrusted into this expert. And I'm still going to have faith that God is going to bring this virus to an end maybe sooner than we think. I'm yeah, still going to yeah. wash my hands and I keep my family safe that this virus will not pass by our doorside. We have to practice not being ignorant to what we see, still being in faith, but using the very best information possible to navigate a very uncertain and very difficult time. Yeah, and no, I, I think it's a great example. It's, it, it's pretty much like do all that we're supposed to do. And then, of course, in yeah. faith that God takes care of the rest. I'm reminded of Lazarus, the fact that they didn't, roll the stone away, that they didn't push the stone away was a sign that they didn't believe what God could do, what he's going to do. And God was pretty much like, hey, you know, I can do the resurrection, but I ain't going to do the stone. And it's almost like God is like, I can heal y'all, but not if you don't wash your hands, right? Like you have to do you know, your part, like roll, roll the stone away. Devon, I want to jump to a, some questions online. Now, one of these questions says, what's the difference between faith and hope? I actually have that for the last segment. So I want to see okay. if there's another question that they could pop up uh, there on the screen for some people that have been sending some things in as we get ready to close out just our first segment. Um, sure. Let's see if we can, we can lock that up. Let's see. I think they got another question coming up here. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is awesome. So does hope influence faith or does faith influence hope? That's a question somebody asked online. Okay, so this, this is a good, this is good. And, and you know, mm -hmm. and some people use hope and faith interchangeably and, and there certainly so you know is what? a nuance too. Actually, D, let's do this. Maybe to answer that question, we've got to answer the question about the difference between faith and, and hope. So let's just go ahead and jump in right now. People are just kind of asking that <laughs> and then let's go that. So the difference between faith and hope, someone online is like, what's the difference between faith and hope? And then does faith, yes. uh, you know, which influences which? It's almost a chicken or the egg. Does hope okay, influence faith okay. and faith influence hope? So let's go both of them. Okay, okay. Again, I don't, I'm not trying to get too, too you know, uh, metaphysical, theological, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to keep it real simple. Yeah. So let's use the biblical definition of faith. Faith mm -hmm. is the substance of things hoped for, right? The evidence of things not seen, right? So faith is the substance of those things we are expecting, right? but the evidence that we have not seen them yet. So okay. hope is a component of faith, but it's, mm -hmm. they're two different things. So it's really, really important to know that when you're in hope, it means you're in expectation about something. And when you're in faith, mm -hmm. it means I have an expectation, but I also am looking at the evidence and believing that because I don't see it, that means it's closer than it's not. Mm -hmm. So I know that's a that's nuance, right? right? But if, right. here, let me put it in for example. So, you know, um, uh, with the movies that I develop, right? So I'm in faith that these movies are going to uh, get produced. And now that we're dealing with the virus, um, you know, all of my productions are on hold. All of Hollywood is not working, just so you know. I mean, every production in the world is shut down right now. Every right, single right. production in the world is shut down. And so I'm in hope. I have an expectation that it's going to get started again. But here's where I mm. need faith, because I don't see it right now. Mm. You catch that? I got you. I yeah, have, I got I have you. the expectation that it's going to start up. Mm -hmm. But I need faith for my hope to endure because I don't gotcha. see the evidence that this thing's ever going to change. Gotcha. Gotcha. This is, Man, this is, this is the, it, it, they, they work hand in hand, but it's really important. Our hope is our expectation. And it's almost like our faith is the vehicle mm -hmm. to help our hope uh, along the way. And so often, some people have an expectation, but they have no faith. 
Mm -hmm. I, I expect this to happen, but I actually don't believe it's going to happen. I love you. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost like expectation and belief. And the two have to work hand in hand. It's one thing to expect something, but too often I find our hope is too low because it's not mm -hmm. based on any belief. It's based upon what we see. Well, I, ex I have hope for tomorrow. I have hope I'm going to go to my job. But what about hoping for greater things that require more belief? So in this right. time, God is saying, I'm going to challenge you right now because I'm going to pull the rug out from underneath the whole world. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have to have hope and belief slash faith in order to make it through this time successfully. So I want people to have the hope and the expectation that, yes, things are going to get better. But you've got to use faith every day to see the unseen. Because if you don't have faith every day, your hope is going to be challenged. Because your faith yeah. is your belief in the unseen. Because I, I have no evidence of it when I look in the natural. But the Bible tells me that when I have no evidence, that's the substance of my faith. Mm. So this hope, this belief, slash faith are almost like two, uh, you know, when you go to war, it's like the sword and the shield, right? Uh, right. If you don't have both, you can't be as effective. Uh, if right. you just got one and you don't have the shield, you can't protect yourself. So you got to have this hope and you got to have this faith working together in order to navigate this time. Man, I, I love that. And just as we get ready to transition, you know, to our, our next part of the segment, one of the things I was reading in preparation for our time together is the, the concept being that this idea of hope is a mindset, right, that we carry. Like, it, it's, it's a thing that we consciously make a decision to have that I'm going to hope. And when I have that conscious mindset, that hope then, of course, feeds my faith. But then the faith also feeds the mindset. So I, I love how we see that it goes you know, hand in hand together. Man, that, that was, a, you know, guys, awesome, awesome, uh, you know, first segment. What we're going to do right now is transition. Uh, we've got our, our group that's going to be singing to us for uh, just, a, you know, a song or two, just to bless you guys. As we get ready to come back for our second segment, we're actually going to get into an incredible text in the book of Romans uh, chapter five. So we want you guys to get ready for that. But right now, I want you to go ahead and stay tuned. We're getting ready to hear some amazing music. It's going to bless your soul and prayerfully give you some I will wait. I will wait. Yes, Lord. I will wait. Yeah. The Lord is my light and salvation. Yeah. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Yes, God. I will wait on you. Mm -hmm. I will trust in you. Jesus. We trust you, Lord. I will trust in you. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Can you help me say, I will remain confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. So the, Lord is the Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be? Who shall I be afraid? Lord is the Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Don't mind waiting on you, Jesus. I will wait on you. Oh Lord, we put our trust in you. I will trust in you. You're the only help we know. Say, I will trust in you. of the Lord. Can you help me say I will remain? I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Sing it one more time. Say I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Sing it all one more time. Say I will remain. I will of 
the Lord. Now come on, open up your mouths and give them glory in this moment. We said I hope on you. We said I hope on your love. We said I hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Come on, let your voices say we said I hope. We said I hope. of the Lord. Uh, help me sing it out. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Sing it out one more time. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. We will see your goodness through this moment. I will we will see your glory. We will see you highly lifted up. See the goodness of the Lord. Can you help me say, I will wait. 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 Don't mind waiting on you, Jesus. We don't mind waiting on you, Jesus. Whatever it takes, God. We don't mind waiting on you, Jesus. Our hopes in you. Our hopes in you. Our hopes in you. Our hopes in you. Our strength is in you. Our strength is in you. Our strength is in you. We don't have to fear. Yeah. No, we don't have to fear. No, no, no. Our hope is in the everlasting. Hope in the everlasting God. Hope is in the everlasting. Hope is in the everlasting God. His strength it never fails. His power never fails. His power never fails. So we will We rest, we rest, we rest, we 
restore joy, for you to restore peace, for you to have your way in us, God, for you to speak to us, Lord. Right now we incline our ears, Lord, to hear what you say to us, Father. Everyone watching at home, and I want to read verses three, four, and five, and then D. I, w I just want to get into. It. I'm gonna ask you a couple things on this because you and I have actually okay. talked about this uh, before, and, and I, I've, I'm, I'm really excited to hear, especially in this context, how how we can break this down. So Romans five verses three, four, and five say this. I'm in the New American Standard Version of the Bible, and not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance and perseverance proven character and proven character hope and hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out within our hearts through the holy spirit who is given to us now dude i know we could just do a whole seven <laughs> hour on that but dude first i want to ask you this because some people have a hard time with this this idea of character is connected to hope, but in order to build character, you've got to go through tribulation. COVID-19 is obviously and clearly a tribulation. Talk to me about your experience, your understanding about this concept of how this situation that we're in, in a, the world, I'm not going to say America, in the world right now, is going to do something positive to our character. Um, yes, you know, I think uh, a number of things. I think all of us, going back to what we talked about, talked to you earlier, are on some level addicted to control. Mm -hmm. And in a moment like this, you know, everything is to a degree, you know, there are parts with, that are within our control, obviously social distancing and doing what we're asked to do, but the virus itself feels like we're out of control. Mm -hmm. As a result, that's when we begin to lose hope. That's when we begin to, to you know, have our faith shaken. And I would say for me, you know, there have been times during this period of time where every day I'm learning more to trust God. Mm -hmm. I'm learning more that I was so committed to my way. This is how I want life to play out. These are the things I want to see happen. This is what I want. And then God's like, okay, I get that, but I want to show you that I'm still the God of the earth and the God of your life. And mm -hmm. sometimes the only way for our character to grow is to go through challenges. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that we can grow in the absence of tension, in the absence of stress. And here's what I mean by that. So, you know, you I know you love to go to the gym. I do, too. Now, if you go to the gym and your workout is too easy, what happens? Mm -hmm. You don't grow. Right. You don't reflect. Your, 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 your look does not reflect the idea you have in your mind for how you want to look physically. The only way for your physicality to reflect your vision is through intense working out where you're, you are continuously challenged and changed so that when you come out of the, the, the workout, your muscle has torn, and then from that tear, you grow. Wow. I know this is a difficult concept sometimes, you know, and again, yeah. I, believe, I believe God's word. You know, all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. 
The word also says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So there are some aspects of this we may never get clarity on until we get to heaven. So I preface it with that. With that being said, our character cannot grow unless we endure challenging moments and challenging times. And our character is really, it's the, it's the core of who we are. And I know it's difficult. I know this time is challenging. I mean, literally every day I'm like, God, is it over yet? Okay. You know, right. sure, you, know if you out there, you watching on Facebook, just go ahead and hit the like button if you've had that prayer. Like, Lord, is it over yet? Um, and, and knowing that I want it to be over, but also saying, okay, God, I'm going to submit and I'm going to commit myself to the moment because I want my character to grow. I want my character to reflect Christ. You know, let's talk about being a Christian. Our, our goal is to, is to live a life that reflects that of our leader, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. He grew. His character was perfected through suffering, yeah. through yeah. trials, through tribulations. And so, yeah. so often as Christians— we just don't want to go through anything. And when we go through stuff, our faith gets shaken. But if anything, as believers, when we go through moments like this, we have to go through it saying, wow, I am walking in steps of Christ. Yeah. My finances yeah. are suffering. My family mm -hmm. is suffering. I am walking in steps of Christ. So that is, you know, talking about the character piece. I do believe our character is perfected in moments of challenge. Yeah, you know, and, and I love that, that idea when you use it even with the gym, because when I think about the gym, you know, everyone wants to come and they want to hit the gym and and build up their arms and, you know, or maybe your chest. But if character is the core, that's the one area a lot of us don't want to work out, right? Like, no one wants to Man. do the core work. Like, Donna Matrix, he got you. You ain't just going up in there and lifting up weights, you know, like you're actually working on your core. And your core yes. is the most difficult part. But if you don't get your core right, then the rest of you isn't together. And, and, I, and I love what you said. Like, sometimes people are saying, well, where is God during this? And I want to make it clear as well. God did not say, let me drop this coronavirus on the world to try and perfect their character. But the cool That's thing right. and awesome thing about God is he can use the very things that would have tried to, like, destroy us, the things that would have broken us down to actually build us back up. And so he says, okay, devil, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to cause panic. You're trying to instill fear. But I'm going to use the very thing that's going to instill fear to try and build up my people's character. And I, yes, I think this I, is awesome how God can do I that. I think what you you said there is critical. And I'll, obviously, I'll jump into the text. I know you had asked about it. Um, um, one of the things you said is critical, which is I agree with you. It's not like God said, okay, I'm just going to give the coronavirus and send the virus to the earth. I don't believe. When you look at the science behind the creation of, of the virus and where it came from, a lot of it has to do with us not taking care of the earth and us going into areas where there are wild animals, which we were never intended to go into. You know, God has a very specific balance to this earth. So on some level, the, the virus is a result of, of our, you know, collective, when I say collective behavior, our, our behaviors as humanity and as the body uh, of, of Christ, not necessarily taking care of the environment. So. I do agree with you that God didn't create the virus, uh, but he does allow his permissible will for certain things to happen. And in that, I do believe that he can still use it for his good and for the good of his people. Um, yeah. to, your, to your question, you know, uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 3. So, and I'm reading from New International Version. Not yeah. only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. So what mm -hmm. sufferings means here, and I had to look this up because I was like, whoa, this is deep. It means to be crushed, pressed, squeezed, as if I'm a great waste. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what this it is. Right so, so, right. so we rejoice in being crushed, pressured, Ooh. and squeezed yeah. by a great oh. weight. Man. It, it, and so this is, and this is, again, see, this is why, you know, when we're talking spiritually, when we live spiritually, it goes against sometimes how we live practically, right? right. Because the world says be afraid. The world says be in fear. You can still be smart and not go outside, but still rejoice in the crushing, in the squeezing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because right. we know what the rejoice is going to produce. So not only, let me see, not only so, but we also rejoice in being crushed by this great weight, because we know that the crushing of that the weight that is crushing us produces right. perseverance. What is yeah. perseverance? Mm -hmm. It is to the, the ability to bear evils and suffering with a tranquil mind. Wow, tranquil mind. Get, get into that because I think that's huge because some of us can endure it, but we got that. And again, we talked earlier, hope is a mindset. So it's, it's tranquil yes. mind. So we're like, let, let, let's get into that because it's like so in the midst of coronavirus, 
there's a mindset yes. and, and a tranquil mindset that we need to have. Yes. And here's the, here's the thing. Anyone listening to this, the, the, the key to navigating this time right now is to preserve and work on your mind. Wow. Because, see, the enemy wants to get in your mind and wants to tell you this virus, the economic repercussions, uh, the professional repercussions, uh, the familial repercussions are going to break. The enemy is trying to tell you you are not going to make it through this. So right. when, when you and I begin to fall into that, that negativity, it becomes a rabbit hole. And every day, instead of focusing on what we can control, we're focused on a future that doesn't even exist yet. Wow. I need you to know that if, if you are listening to this, it's all about preserving your mind. So in the morning when you get up, the first thing, don't check your phone. Put yeah, your that's phone good. across the room. Please listen to me. Whoever is on this Facebook or on Mount Rubido's page, listen to me. Please put your phone on the other side of the room. Why? Because you've got to wake up and you've got to set your mind for the day. And sometimes yeah. what happens is we go straight to our phone. And our phone mm -hmm. does not produce tranquility. It produces more stress. Wow. We're looking at that's text a word. messages. We're looking at the news. We're scrolling through Twitter. We're scrolling through Instagram. And then we wonder why our day is not productive or we don't have more peace because we started it in chaos with the right. noise of the world. So this is a critical period of time to keep our mind clear. That's what this perseverance means. It means bearing these evils and suffers, sufferings, but we're doing it with a clear mind. Like, okay, God, I know you're in this. Lord, give me the ability. Just give me enough grace for today. I don't yeah. have to worry about tomorrow. That's what you said, Matt, and Jesus said in Matthew 6, you know, uh, 6, when he's doing the Sermon on the Mount, he says, don't even worry about tomorrow. If I'm going to take care of the sparrows and lilies of the field, I got you. So when we yeah. need a tranquil mind, we have to say, Lord, give me enough grace for today. Give me enough peace for today. Help me, God, in the areas when I'm weak. We have to commit and submit our mind to him in the morning in order to navigate this and continue to have a clear mind as we face trials. One other thing I want to say about this is which yeah. is critical. Because so many of you right now are, are struggling financially um, and are already bearing the weight of this. One of the things that I would encourage you to do is to say to God, God, these are your bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yeah. you, I, Lord, show me how you want, show me how you want me to pay these. Show right. me. <laughs> and, and, and what he will do, he will. No, I'm telling you. Either he'll say, call the call the landlord. He'll say, call the credit company. Tell him, you know, you got to make arrangements because of the virus, and there's going to be favor there for you. It doesn't always mean that the cash is going to come immediately, but I believe he's going to help you make the arrangements needed in order to preserve what he already knows you need to preserve in your life. Anytime yeah. you get into a challenge mentally, give it back to him. Hey, God, yeah. I need your help on this. Show me this. Okay, I'll keep going. All right. Um, perseverance. Okay, so so uh, it says, not only, um, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. Right. What is character? Character, when you look up character, it means approved character, tested mm -hmm. character. We all mm -hmm. have character, but not all of our character has been tested. Not all of it has been approved. Not all of yeah. it has been through something. So this means that when we go through these things, our character grows. Why? Because the perseverance that we need to have through, these, through this crushing is going to show that our character is approved. Oh, you've been through something. Oh, you made it through. Wow, you now have the capacity in your core to handle more. The last part of it is hope. And, and this hope does not disappoint. We talked about it. Hope is expectation. And this hope, so, this expectation does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love. God is saying when we hope in him, when we have an expectation of him, he never will return his word void. And he yeah. tells us that because he's poured out his love through the Holy Spirit, we can actually expect every promise that he's given us. So, 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 Devon, because this is this is great, you know. As we're as we're sitting here, we're really as Christians, you and I, we're 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 looking at this, you know, from a biblical perspective. Like, hey, this is going to prove our character. It's going to test us. Uh, it's going to crush us to bring something out of us, and also to pour something into us that we don't have. And here's one of the questions that just came in from online: How do I share this concept with an unbeliever who? Or I, let me, I, I hate to, that word sometimes sounds so too distant. With someone who doesn't yeah. share the same beliefs as me, who's not looking at it in, a, in, in this kind of way, what would be a practical way for you to share like, hey, 
we we got to go through something, but we're going to come out of it like pure gold, yeah. you know, as the Bible says, you know, purified through the fire, right? So how yes. did you exp explain or break that down to somebody who, you know, maybe isn't going to look at this text, but they but they need yeah. to still yep. understand this framework to get hope? Because we're saying, if you look at the equation, it's pretty much saying that the result of tribulation isn't just character, it's hope. So it's almost like without tribulation, there could be no hope, right? <laughs> right. Right. Here, here's what I would say, and, and, and that's a really good question, really good question. And the, lo the large majority of people that God has, uh, has allowed me to, to speak to um, are people that, uh, you know, are not necessarily people of what we would say faith. You know, people uh, that have not necessarily subscribed um, yet or given their life to Christ, but, um, you know, they still are searching mm -hmm. and they're seeking. So God has allowed me to speak to a number of people in this category. And what I would say is that if you're trying to share this word, uh, the number one way to do it uh, for someone who may not be a believer is to is to articulate the principles, which is, mm -hmm. you know what, we're in a difficult time. You know what, why don't you and I um, every morning just send each other a positive text, That's good. you know, to start the day. All right. So you mm -hmm. can begin to teach someone biblical principles and they don't even know it. Right. So you, you can teach them, OK, let, you know what? Right now, let's focus on what we can control, all right? We can control our disposition. We can control how we wake up. We can control how we keep our mind. We can control being productive during the day. So you can instruct somebody on how to keep a tranquil mind, even in different difficult times, and they'll get the benefit of doing what the Bible instructs without even knowing they're doing without it. Even knowing, without even knowing scripture, yes. just, just kind of living. And, 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 you know, I think that's such a huge thing because the crisis I think that the church is coming to right now and I don't think this is deviating off of what we're talking about, is, is the idea of now that we're not able to be in a building and technically preach to people, how do we still get these this message out? Like, how do we still do it? And I love what you're saying. It's saying, look, I don't need a pulpit. I don't need even need a Bible text. But if I am embodying hope and sharing that hope and pouring that hope into somebody else without them even knowing it, they're getting biblical principles, biblical values, and that's a seed that we're planting, and the Holy Spirit's job is going to be to marinate that. There you go. And also, one of the things that, that's really important that you just said, and I think it's important for anyone listening, um, even in our desire to be as strong as we can be in this time, I think we all in our flesh have fear. You know, it's, it is scary. Let's just be honest about that. What I have noticed is that when I help somebody else out, it helps me in my faith too. Okay. When I put, when I sacrifice my own worry, my own anxiety, my own discomfort, and give someone else an encouraging word, it encourages me too. So I would encourage anyone right now, what, uh, you know, if you're dealing with believers or even non-believers, encourage them. You know, be positive. Have a listening ear. Don't be so quick to 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 judge, but just listen and say, "Wow, you know what? We're going to get through this." You know, hey, yeah. guess what? I was reading this article. Hey, why don't you read this article? It really helped me. You know, I was looking at, at this book. You should read this book. It'll help you. Do what we can do to help others be encouraged during during this time is one of the most effective strategies, I believe, practically, that will help us navigate this time. Yeah, you know, I, just before we close this segment, I want to sneak one more question in from the audience uh, from the, online uh, that came in. They asked the question, is hope contagious beyond what you say? And, and I want to ask this question by giving an example, some just, you know, I was in line yesterday at the grocery store trying to get just a few more things. And there was a person um, who was behind me, she was pregnant. So I said, hey, you could go ahead and go in front of me because you know, Trader Joe's are only letting about 20 people in the store um, at a time. I even love what Costco is doing. They have a certain hour just for seniors. Um, but I I'm wondering, are acts like that a way of spreading hope to say, hey, look, I'm not worried about getting in before you I know things are going to be all right. There'll be enough for all of us. You go ahead and go in front of me. You know, you're with child. You might need some things more than me. Like, is hope contagious beyond what we say by doing those kind of acts? And what would you say it looks like in the context by which we're in? If, if we're not sending texts, like, how can we act hopefully let me, so let, that it can be spread to other people? Let me tell you, anyone listening to this, please take in this. This is so good. Yes, hope is contagious. Hope, hope is more contagious than the coronavirus. Mm, and and, and our goal, <laughs> hope is more contagious than the yeah. coronavirus. And and our goal should be to infect as many people as we can. 
yeah. with hope. But yeah. we first have to be infected with it. Right. And that mm-hmm. hope and that expectation of what God is going to do, because we have the evidence. We we have our we know what He's done in our life. So when we are hopeful, then we bring that hope to others. And to your point about doing acts of kindness, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because here's the reality, and this is this. I'm going to say this for those that are, are believers. There are a lot of people who don't believe, but they're suffering right now, and they know you're a believer. So they're going to be watching your disposition on how you handle this moment, mm-hmm. and they're going to say, "Wow, if they lost faith." and they have faith, then I know I could never have faith. You get what I'm saying? Right, so it's right. really important for <laughs> us as believers to really have hope, be positive, you know, do what we can do for others, because that, that hope is going to spread. And that hope, because here's the reality, the virus is going to flatten out. We will get back to a society where we're able to get back in motion. But the thing we want to remain is that virus of hope. And so this is why now is the perfect time to spread it, to give it to as many people as we can because they need it. Yeah, man, that, that's good because when we, it, the goal would be that when everything levels out, if we can come out of this with a stronger character and a deeper hope, that, that would mean so much, man. Uh, Rich, man, we got, we got one more segment, Devon. So uh, we're, we're going nice. to have you for one more thing because we want to transition a little bit with another verse that we're going to get into uh, that we're going to set up. But just uh, for that, we hope you guys have been enjoying the conversation. Keep your questions coming. Now, there's a few questions on there about last days and running to the hills and stuff that we're not going to get to in this because this particular topic is about hope. But in the next two weeks, we actually do have something on uh, the you know pandemic uh, prophecy and panic. So we're going to be talking about that um, later on. So we're going to reserve your questions for really just this idea of hope and purpose, which we're going to get into. But right now, uh, we're going to shift to a time where we're going to ask everyone who has consistently been giving, and maybe some of you are some new givers, and you're probably saying, oh my goodness, how on earth can, at this time, when the world's falling apart, people are losing jobs, the church still be asking us to give? And I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why. Today at 3 p.m., we are doing a drive-by here at Mount Rubidoux. We have prepared bags for individuals who cannot get what they need in the grocery store for these essential items with food, things that you know help keep them clean and to help them you know be hunkered down inside the house and not have to go out. Now we were only able to do that because people have continually during this time been able to donate. And so what your donations are able to go through now through our tithe and through our partners in ministry and through our church budget are able to help the mission of Mount Rubido continue to go forward. Uh, and that mission is not only, of course, I'm just going to be 100 with you. It is not only being able to you know, feed individuals and give them supplies they can't get in the stores. But I'm going to tell you a commitment I made this week. I told my barber, I said, look, you're not going to be able to cut. But here's my commitment to you. I'm going to give you what I was going to be giving you every single week as if I was given a haircut because I don't want you to suffer that way as well. So we have employees here also at Mount Rubido that are continually trying to serve and they're serving in their own way. And we want to continue to keep them going. We got people who are helping us run the cameras. We got our musicians and stuff in. And we want to let them know that in times of crisis, the church is still here for you as well. And so your donations are going directly to help us continue to do what we're doing to keep the mission of Mount Rubido going forward, serving our community, keeping individuals connected through groups, uh, and, and, and keeping us getting ready to give you content that's going to be inspiring and continue to grow your faith and as we're talking today and your hope. So we want to ask that you would continue for those of you who are who have been continuing to give, I'm asking you to keep doing what you've been doing. For those of you who have never given before, man, trust God with what you have because it's during this time that I think we're really going to be able to see uh, where our trust, our hope and our faith is in God. Be responsible with it. Be responsible with your giving. I'm asking you to be responsible with your giving, but we're asking you to continue to give because we want to continue to help this mission move forward. So at this time, while you're doing that on your phone, you can see the links right there on the homepage to be able to give. We put them up. Secure Give is the app that we have. You can download the app, Secure Give, put in Mount Rubido when it asks for your area or our zip code, and just put that donation right there. And again, it's going towards furthering the mission of us being able to serve our community. Now, right now, uh, while you're doing that, we're going to be excited to just be able to let you hear another uh, selection from this incredible group that's just been blessing us today and even on last week. So be blessed, and we'll come back for our third and final segment with Devon. Fix 
that's on my zone oh. You see I'll steal your love For someone who will respond Sit high, steal your love for somewhere you can't abide. And I'm right here, I'm the one. You don't have to search no more, I'm the one you're looking for. When you call me, I will respond. When you pull me, I will come running to your arms. See, I will respond to you. Oh, oh, oh. I will respond. You see all, you see all, still, still you're looking for, some, for someone who will respond. And I'm right here, I'm right here. Oh, you said hi, you said hi, still, still you're looking for, some, for somewhere you could abide. And I'm right here. I'm right here. See, I'm the one. Oh, oh, oh. You don't have, you don't have, have to, to search no more. I'm the one. I'm the one you're looking for. When you call me, I will respond. Yeah. When you call me, I will respond. When you pull me, I will come running to your heart. I will, I will respond. When you call me, I will respond. When you call me, I will respond. When you pull me. Talk one more time. So you see all, you see all, still, still you're looking for, for somewhere you will respond. And I'm right here, I'm right here. Oh, when you sit high, Lord, you sit high, yeah. still you're looking for someone. For When you call me, I will respond. Yeah, when you call me, I will respond. And God, when you pull me, I will come running to your heart. I made up in my mind, I, I will respond. When you call me, I will respond. Yeah, when you call me, I will respond. And when you pull me, I will come running.
call me, I will respond. If you send me, I will respond. Lord, if you send me, I will respond. Lord, if you send me, I will respond. Lord, if you send me, yeah. And when you move me, I will respond. When your spirit moves me, I will respond. When your spirit moves me, I will respond. When your spirit moves, me, I will respond. So send me out, go. I will respond. So send me out, go. I will respond. God, send me out, go. I will respond. Yes, Lord, send me out, go. I will respond. I've said that I will respond, Lord. I will respond. I
you call me, I will respond. When you call me, I will respond. When you pull me, I will come running to your arms. I will. I will respond to you. 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 My answer will be yes, Lord, yes. My answer will be yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I will respond. My answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I will My answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I will My answer will be yes, Lord, yes. My answer will be yes, Lord, yes. When you say to go, I'll go. When you say to speak. Lord, when you say not to fear, I won't fear, Lord. When you say to be bold, I'll be bold, Lord. I will respond. I will respond to you. 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 So good, so good. Thank you guys so much uh, for just blessing us with that praise and worship and segment as we just continue to transition. Um, also want to thank you guys so much for your gifts. Um, I want to let you know that God has promised to make a way out of no way. And he has this week. We found a place. And I never thought that this would be the blessing that I would be praising God for, but he found a place for us to order toilet paper. So we are super excited about what God's going to do. And your gifts are going to help us purchase enough for families that are literally running out. And that's just another thing to stress them out. Food also as well. So again, I just want to thank you for your gifts. Um, Devon, we got one more segment. You good? How, how, how you doing? I mean, you ain't got nowhere else to I'm go. Good. Still, how you feeling? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm right here. We, we can go all day. No problem. We can go no all day. I know it. So, so man, there's this text. Jeremiah, you guys, the next text we're going to get to, our final text for the day, is Jeremiah 29, 11. Now, everybody knows this text. Now, I'm going to just be real. It's kind of like the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. Uh, sometimes text, you know, I know the plans I have for you, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want to set this up for you, D, for this reason because it ties into Roman spots. So I didn't just randomly pick this text because, oh, it's a good text to talk about purpose and all that kind of stuff. So we always quote Jeremiah 29, 11 uh, by itself. And we kind of deal with it by itself. We just talked about Romans 5, talked about tribulation. Here is the context real quick. Now, I want you guys to look at your Bibles and never seen this before of Jeremiah 29, 11. The context is actually verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles who I've sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So literally, he's talking to them about being in exile. And Devon, here's a part about this text that blew my mind. While they're in exile, he's not telling them, I'm about to redeem you. I'm going to pull you out. So just chill. He literally mm -hmm. tells them to get comfortable. And listen to what he says. Build houses and live in them and plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and become the fathers of sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there and do not decrease. So he goes through a whole bunch of stuff also telling them how they're to live in this land. And then at the end, he says, for I know the plans that I have for you. So the concept and the idea that really sparked me wanting to have this conversation with you for everyone to be a part of is you have this incredible question that you asked me that we were talking about that I want you to expound on. It's almost as if God has something for us, that he's calling us to some kind of purpose and that we can find our purpose in the midst of a pandemic. So talk to us about what God was saying to you about what yeah. you needed to get into as people about this idea. You're in the midst of this, but there's a purpose that I have in yeah. you through this. Yes. Yes, I mean, and, and I and thank you for giving that context to this verse because so often, uh, you know how it is. People preach this this verse and they never give the context for it, and so the context really helps understand us help us understand what God really means here. And it's amazing 
that he can say all that and send them from Jerusalem to Babylon, which is a foreign territory, and he tells them to, hey, I'm not going to, you know, deliver you anytime soon, so get comfortable. But he says, I know the plans I have for you. I yeah. know what I've done, I'm going to do for you. And here's what God was telling, saying to me about this pandemic and kind of where we are, which is there's a temptation to outsource our days to news and entertainment. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Say I'm going to say it again. For those that just got online, I'm going to say it yeah, again. Say it one more time. There is a, there is a, a temptation to outsource our days to watching the news or consuming ourselves with entertainment. Now, for those of you who don't know me, you know my day job is I'm a producer, so I, I live in the world of entertainment and I make content. That's my that's my day job, so to speak. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with entertainment. However, entertainment, when it becomes our escape to the degree that we don't actually process the reality that we're in, I argue that we would, we're would we allowing watching the news and consuming entertainment to take away valuable, productive time. In this time, this is one of the this this may be one of the only times in the history of the earth that everyone is being affected by the same thing, and mm -hmm. it gives all opportunity to do one thing: stop, wow. rest, mm -hmm. think. This time, I believe, is a powerful time for us to ask the question of God: God. What do you want me to use this time to do? Wow. And I believe that this is a time for all of us to grow more in him, for all of us to grow uh, as individuals. You know, so instead of watching the news all day or consuming entertainment all day, you know, let's get out a book. Let's read. Let's plan what we're going to do when the virus subsides and we can get back to regular life. What are those thoughts that we haven't even thought because we were so busy and distracted? Think about it. Before this hit, we're running from one place to another. We're doing so many different things. We're, we're, we're just so busy that we don't even have a time to think. Wow. But God is continuously sending us messages about what he wants us to do, what areas of faith he wants us to grow in, who he wants us to become. And this, to me, is a perfect time to tune up our reception so we can get those messages. You know, uh, the book of um, Romans uh, chapter 12 talks about uh, you know, that um, uh, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, right? Mm -hmm. And, and as we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, one of the key things is that we will be able to start to understand what God's will is, because if we don't know what his will is, a lot of it has to do with our mind. We've got to renew our mind to get his will. So right, what I, right. when I love that example, think about this. Right now, if, if you didn't have Wi-Fi, um, first of all, you probably will be going crazy like so many other people, right? I'm For sure. But what happens once you get back into a Wi-Fi area or your or your cell server starts working? All these messages that you that couldn't get to you, the moment mm. your reception is fixed, all Come on, the messages man. hit your inbox. <laughs> Come on, God man. God is using this moment to fix our connection with him. So that all these messages that have been waiting can get yeah. to hit the inbox of our spirit and our soul. That's what this moment is. And if I spend the day in worry, I spend the day in doubt, I spend the day in frustration, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. Now, listen, Bro, I, 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 I don't want to yeah. over trivial. Oh, go ahead. No, you got it. You got it. You got it. No, no. I, I, bro, I, I just, I don't want you to move past that because that just messed me up. And I hate that you said it because now I can't preach it. Um, or I might just still do it anyway. Dude, so I just want to hear this concept again. So it's almost as if, We've been living in a world that's so connected. We've been disconnected from God. So the messages haven't gotten in. Now the moment we're disconnected from everybody else, you're saying now the signal is wide open for God. And we yes. got to sit down and let that stuff be. I mean, that's crazy. Because we would think that now would be the time. So so, 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 so I just got to get there because someone, I, I really think someone needs to hear that because Instead of us now saying, because I hear people all the time say, I ain't got nothing to do, I ain't got nothing to do. And what I hear you saying is, no, you got something to do. Check your inbox from all these messages that you've been uh, missing because you've been going all over the place. Who man, listen, listen, there's an abundance of things to do. And so much of, of what I believe we got to do is, is first, because here's the thing. Uh, if, if, if I am not strong in spirit, it's going to be very hard for me to strengthen others, right? If, if I judge myself, then I'm going to judge others. If I love myself, then I'm going to love others. So now is the time 
if, if we want to be a service to our neighbor, then we first have to be a better service to ourselves by getting these messages. You're absolutely right. We have been so connected, you know, we're, we're, we're more connected now technologically than ever before on the earth, but we've been more disconnected from God. Now is a moment where we have an, an opportunity to press in, to seek his will, to seek his face and God to say to the Lord, Lord, give me these messages that I otherwise was too busy to hear or I was too distracted to understand. Give me the message. And then during the day, what do we do? We, I, I literally, I got, a note, I got a notebook right here. A notebook, man. I, I, take, I take this notebook. I got a pen. And I yeah. write what I hear God say. I write it. I encourage you to do it. Write. Write the messages. Right. Pray on them. Because this is a perfect, powerful time for personal development so that we can really grow into the people God wants us to be. What is the, just if, even if you're not a reader, take one good book that can propel your mind during this time and read it. In addition to the Bible, read that one good book. What's the online? Listen, online classes, you can still take an online class. If you don't have enough to do during the day, where do you want to go after this is over? Sign up for an online class now, and they don't cost that much money. Do whatever you can do to keep your mind and your spirit strong. And now here's one thing I will also say. For those of you, I know there's some that are really dealing with a financial issue right now. And so none of what we're saying is meant to trivialize that at all. I would just encourage you to, again, now that there's time, instead of spending that time in worry, seek God's will. God, what is your message around my finances that I otherwise haven't been able to get? How do I create a budget in this time? That once we're out of it, I now have my finances in order. And now all I got to do is is, is uh, live according to what God gave me during this period of time. So I do believe that this is a time of planning. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Right. We got to use this time to plan, plan with him. God, what are your plans for me? And how do I participate in those plans and prepare for those plans right now? Yes. Yeah, so, so, man, I, I love this because what I'm hearing, you know, you also say is some of us have been walking around. And I know I've heard you preach different things and, I, you know, we're, we're together and I hear people come up and ask you different questions, trying yeah. to figure out what's my purpose. So I hear you saying, hey, look, this is not only a good time for those who have a purpose to plan it, to work on it, to pour more into it. But for those who don't know what it is, now is the time for you to be still and hear what God's purpose is for your life during this time absolutely absolutely i mean you know like uh you know so uh, even though we're you know what do you call it sheltered shelter in place or safer at home um you can still go outside that is an okay permissible thing to do so one of the things that i like to do in the morning is to get up and you know i'll go jump rope and do some push-ups just to clear my mind but then i also ask god you know what do you want me to do yeah. what do you want me to do today you know, like, yeah, I have meetings that I'm doing through video conference and I'm doing conference calls and I have a lot of things planned, but I'm saying, God, what do you want me to do? What is, how do you want to use me during this time? How can I be usable? And so I think each one of us got to seek, has to seek God's will to understand his plans during this time and do it daily so that we get a better understanding of how we can make our day, days more productive. So that we don't just spend our days worrying and anxiety and frustration. Uh, and then we tune out, we watch the news, we watch a movie or a show, and then we do it all over again, do it all over again. And then when this is over, we're not better for it. Right. How do we use right. this time to plan and prepare and to grow and to learn and to become who he needs us to be so that we can be the lights for others who do not know him? This is our time. It's our time to, to work on our light so we can shine brighter than ever before, I do believe. So, so Devon, with the idea of purpose, because, again, tying into this idea, tribulation, you know, brings character, you know, your character, proven character, perseverance, you know, hope. And we talked about this idea of hope. Now we're saying, hey, look, in the midst of a pandemic, we can find our purpose, right? Because we're actually pausing, listening to God. Let's talk for a second, though, because here's a question online. I've got my purpose, but let's say my purpose is entrepreneurship. You know, let's say someone believes it's, it's building. Give a practical example. How can someone work in their purpose in the midst of a pandemic? So, like, what, would you, what, what things would you tell someone to do? Like, for you, you know, you, I love how you say God put you on this earth to create film, to leave an imprint, his imprint in people's lives through film. 
Like that's what your purpose is. That's what God placed you on this earth to do. Well, right now you, you're not able to make a film. You can't go into studios and do that. How are you still living your purpose on a practical level during this pandemic and quarantine? Yeah, so so again, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I'm encouraging everyone to do right now. And I pray everyone listening to this will really take this to heart because I believe it's, it'll be the difference maker uh, in your life right now. And so for me, I'm doing exactly this, I'm planning. So while I can't produce the movie and make the movie, you know, there's, I'm working on the scripts, you know, I'm working with my writers who, who I've hired to work on these scripts. We're developing the scripts so that when we're ready to go and this whole thing passes, we already have the scripts that are ready to be produced. If we spent this time worrying, not working, all of a sudden the virus is gonna pass, the curve is gonna flatten out, and they're gonna say, okay, you can go back to work. Guess what, we're gonna be unprepared. Yeah. Because we would have spent this whole time, I mean, California is on lockdown for 30 days. So we would have spent 30 days in worry. And then once it's over, our work will suffer because of it. Wow. So for me, I'm working on the scripts, I'm working on my next book. You know, I'm, I'm, I just turned in the outline for the book yesterday. I got a, another book I'm doing with Audible. You know, I'm working on social media to really, you know, help inspire as many people as I can every day. You know, I'm sending text messages to different friends and family saying, hey, just checking on you, thinking about you. I'm sending emails to different people in the business saying, hey, I'm thinking about you. How are you doing? Like, I'm using Ed this whole time to be productive so that when this is over, I'm ready to get back to work. So if you're, if you're an entrepreneur, now's the time to plan the business. Now's the mm -hmm. time to say, okay, what are the things that are working in my entrepreneurship? What are the things that are not working? How can I refine my systems? If you're an entrepreneur, you've got to get this book. This book right here is an entrepreneur will change your life. It's called Principles by Ray uh, Dalio. This is yeah, it's a good one. Manual. Read it. Read it. It's a good It'll one. blow your mind and it will help you plan. So if you're an entrepreneur, or you're self-employed, and your work right now is on hiatus, use this time to perfect your gift. Use this time to perfect your processes. Read, study, plan. So when this is over, you can get right back into it and become even better become more proficient, make more money, because you use this time to build up your business and build up yourself, and you didn't squander it in worry, despair, anger, and frustration. Man, I, I, I love that. So we're going to be intentional with this time, and it's almost yeah. like, I love what you said earlier, God's going to say stop, but our purpose doesn't stop. Our planning doesn't stop. We continue to keep yes. our hands to the plow. It just looks different yes. so that we're ready to go. And I think what's so awesome about what you're saying is now – and not that it's so much a competition, but I'm just saying in life, if we continue to keep living our purpose, to keep planning around it, to keep pushing it, then when the pandemic is left, like you said, curve flattens out, we're further ahead than maybe anybody else who was just Netflixing and chilling and feeling justified in that. And so it's almost as if the devil wants to sap our hope because when we lose our hope, then we don't plan. We don't plan. We're unable to fulfill our purpose. We lose our purpose. We lose our identity. And we can't let that happen because God has stuff for us to still do, not only in the midst of this, but even after it's done. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I mean, there's a, there's a text in Matthew that um, we studied last night, uh, Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give yeah. you rest. Yeah. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and mm -hmm. learn from me, for mm -hmm. I am gentle, humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yeah. Now is the time to give control of our life and our mind back to God. Jesus is yeah. saying here, if you would allow my control to supersede your control, you're going to find your burdens are going to go down. Your stress is going to go down because my control over your life is easy and it's much lighter than when you want to control. And this yeah. verse messed me up because during this period of time. You know, I'm trying to control the uncontrollable. Yeah, yeah. Which is, man, I want this thing to be over. It ain't right. over. It ain't going to be <laughs> sure. over. We don't know right. when it's going to be over. And right. so what I noticed is that when I was in that kind of tension of wanting it to be over and the frustration that it's not, Jesus took me to this verse and he said, you got to take the yoke, my yoke, which is my control. Jesus is saying, I know where I want to lead you. So you got to take my yoke and put it on you and let me take you where I want you to be. Because mm -hmm. if you're an ox and you're bucking against the yoke, guess what? It is going to be frustrating. 
Your burdens right. are going to be heavy. Verse is saying, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Mm. Yeah. Take where yeah. you want me to be. And yeah. even as I'm planning every day, it's an act of surrender. It's like, mm. Lord, I'm planning, but show me what you want me to be. Lord, right. I'm studying, but take my studies where you want me to go. Lord, I'm growing, but use my growth for your glory. We have That's to amazing. every day take his yoke, his control, and let him guide us where he would have us to be. And whenever we're in tension, whenever we're in frustration, it means our control is fighting with his control. That's so good. Any, any area in our life where we're just, ugh, ah, we're a little frustrated, we're a little uneasy, we, that's an area where we're trying to control something that he has in control. Yeah. So we have to practice. It. Okay, Lord, you know what? Maybe you don't want me to go to work for another 30 days. Okay. All right. I'm going to I'm gonna submit to your control, and I will be productive in the meantime. That's yes. what's so powerful about the Jeremiah text. They're, they're not in their homeland. They're in right. Babylon. And God is saying, listen, I'm going to keep you here for a while, so I need you to get comfortable. Yeah. I need you to surrender. I have not forgotten about you. I am going to do every plan I, I, I plan for your life, but you're going to have to surrender to this moment because it's going to take longer than you think. And this is one of the areas that I love about what this conversation and what I, I've taken away is that I have to plan, I have to prepare, I have to use this time for purpose. And at the same time, every day, I have to seek his will and allow his control to supersede my control. Yeah, man, and I, and I love that. And you can't, you won't be planning towards your purpose if you have no hope. Um, D, I want to take just a few more questions uh, online. Yeah, How do I know what God is saying to me during this time? I think we've already established that. The only way you're going to figure that out is to sit back, you know, unplug where you naturally are to a certain extent unplugged and take some time to sit aside to do that. Let's look at a couple more uh, that we've sure. been getting in uh, on, on Facebook. They're just waiting to feed that to me uh, real quick. You see this. So how do I build hope again after it's been lost? That's what someone's asking me. How do you Great. build it again? Like, I've lost it. How does it get built? Again? Great. I, I, I think that it's important to really identify where your hope was lost in first. What area of life? Okay. Um, it's okay. like, okay, you know what? Here's where it was. You know, it was in my finances, it was in my family. You know, maybe you lost a loved one. Uh, you know, maybe there, you're going through a, a broken relationship, a divorce, or, you know, whatever the trauma is. You have to identify where the hope was lost. It's almost like you have to go mm -hmm. on a search and say, okay, this is this was the moment where I lost my hope in this area of life. And then you have to take small steps to rebuild your hope in that area of life. So let's say it's in the area of your love life, right? You had a heartbreak and, and you know, things didn't go the way that you wanted uh, or things that didn't go the way you expected. The way to rebuild hope in your love life is to, one, acknowledge what happened to you. I just, I mean, I know we're doing this interview. I know our time is short. I just have to pause here, though. This is so important. Yeah, that's good. Too often in the body of Christ, too often as people of faith, we are trying to coach people into being superheroes instead of people. Ooh. Jesus is the only superhero that ever walked the earth. Mm -hmm. We are not. We bleed if you cut us. So yeah. too often we don't want people to feel what they're going through and then people are in denial, they're in suppression, and then we wonder why people can't endure the race of being a believer because we don't coach them to be honest about how they feel to begin with. Yeah, there it is. We cannot suppress anything that we are in denial about, we empower to destroy us. So if you are going through heartbreak, you gotta say, Lord, that hurt. Lord, th this situation broke my spirit I thought this was going to be forever. I thought this was going to lead to marriage. I thought my marriage was going to last. But Lord, this broke me. Help yeah. me, Lord. In yeah. order to build hope, you first have to acknowledge, man, this hurts. Mm. So after you acknowledge the area in which your hope was lost, you've got to start taking those small steps. One of the most powerful steps is first, it starts in your mind. So let's say again, we're talking about a love example. You've got to mm -hmm. start with, I am lovable, yeah. and I and I can love. I am lovable. Why? I know that may sound corny to some people, but here's the reality. When you go through a heartbreak, the enemy wants to make you think that you are not lovable, yes, that sir. you're not, you're going to be alone the rest of your life. So you got to start taking the small steps of, of building your hope back up in your mind.
which will then help you build it back up in your spirit. And as you begin to affirm, this is why I encourage you to get a journal and a, and a thing. You got a, and a pen. Write every day the area in which your hope has to be built back up. You know what? I'm coming back. My heart is bending. My heart is healing today. My heart is growing today. I am lovable and I can love. These are some steps to rebuild hope. And you can apply that to any area which your hope is lost. Yeah, man, that, that's, that, that's just so good, man. That, 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 honestly, because I think a lot of people are losing that hope and to hear those practical steps is gonna be extremely helpful. Devon, just one more question. Uh, I'm yeah. really behind on having quiet time with God. I haven't had it for months. It's hard for me to read the word too. Do you have any recommendations for some books that can help me along in that journey? They're just kind of wondering, and maybe kind of what are you reading during this time that's helping you get the days, you know, go through? Maybe even what you're doing for your devotional in the Bible, what books are you reading in the Bible and then outside of it during this time? Yeah, you know, I, I would absolutely, uh, you know, for someone who hasn't had quiet time, um, you know, first, just do me a favor. Uh, just start five minutes of quiet yeah. time with God in the morning. Five minutes. When the the first thing you do when you get up, just just for just to build your strength back, take those five minutes and spend them with God. What does that look like? It looks like prayer. It can look like affirmations. If you want something to study, I would encourage you to make uh, um, Matthew 11, uh, 28 to 30, your meditation. Matthew 11, 28 to 30, your meditation. Remind yourself that his burden is light. His yoke is easy. You got to keep your mind right. The other thing is that there's a lot of books that I read right now. Um, you know, one of them, which I, I love, is uh, this book called The Power of, this, of Your Subconscious Mind. Uh, that book is really, really powerful. There's also another book that's like, it'll take you, you can listen to it in 30 minutes. It's called Feeling is the Secret. It's a very powerful book. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I combine, I pair all these things with, you know, the Word of God, obviously. And, uh, you know, and I just do my best to keep my mind right. But I've got to create a routine around that. There have been times when I've fallen off, too. There have been times when I was like, you know, going strong. And then all of a sudden I got busy. And lo and behold, I haven't been spending no time with the Lord. And let right. me tell you, he, he, he got my attention. Um, so, <laughs> you know, when I needed to rebuild my routine, I just started small. All right, I started with the five minutes. And then that built to the 10 minutes. And then based upon your schedule, you can grow that into as many minutes as you can afford to do in the morning, but no matter how many minutes it is, just be consistent and also yeah. give yourself a little grace the same way God does too. Don't beat yourself yeah. up over this. Man, it's so good. Man, Devon, honestly, man, this has been rich um, because that's what we need and hope is contagious. And I, and I hope that everybody online, you guys watching, thank you so much for the questions. Don't think the conversation has to stop. Um, Devon does a great job of responding you know, when you go in his comment sections or, you know, try to hit him up through his mentor mail, different things like that, go to his page and look at that because you might still have some more questions on what we talked about today. And of course, any questions you have for me, hit me up as well. Devon, one of the things that I know so many people have been blessed by, it's so unique. It's not fancy. There's no lighting. There's no special camera. You can literally be in your car and you stop and you have just been blessing people with these prayers, man. I'm going to ask right now if you could do the same thing for everybody who's watching online and if you could just uh, intercede for them right now on hope and purpose for their life during this time of this uh, pandemic. Absolutely. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, dear Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness and grace. Uh, you said where two or three are gathered, you be in our midst. So we thank you, dear Lord, for being in our midst right now. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, for the world. We pray for everyone being impacted and affected uh, by this coronavirus, dear Lord. We pray, dear Lord, for those on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the first responders on the front lines fighting this virus, dear Heavenly Father, the scientists. We pray, dear Lord, for wisdom. We pray for protection, dear Heavenly Father. I pray right now that anyone listening to this service would know that you love them. I pray right now, anyone listening to this service, they would know they will not fall. Yes. They will not break. I pray anyone listening to this service would know that you do have a plan for them. I pray anyone listening to this service would know you have not forgotten about them. I pray that anyone listening to this service would trust you even when they can't trace you. I pray anyone listening to this service would know that you are with them every step of the way. I pray right now for the finances of those listening. I pray, dear God, that you just would continue to be the God of the resources and that you would send the resources, dear Lord. 
I pray right now for anyone dealing with some family challenges that you would provide the solution to those family challenges. I pray right now for parents who are dealing with children in their home and needing to school them every day that you would provide them the guidance, the wisdom, dear Heavenly Father, and the disposition to handle, dear Heavenly Father, what may seem like an overwhelming situation. I pray right now anyone whose marriage is suffering because of this. I pray right now anyone who's single and feels lonely. I pray you would deal with their loneliness, whatever the need may be. I pray, dear God, that you would allow us to have hope. Allow us, dear Lord, to expect you to do what you said you would do, which is you would never leave us nor forsake us. And remind us in this expectation of you being there for us, that we have a purpose to play in this. Faith without works is dead. So let us do our work and let us operate on purpose and let us plan and let us develop and let us become so that when this is over, and your word says this too shall pass. So we know yes. this will pass. So that when this is over, we, we have the powerful combination of hope and purpose. And we come out of this with the coronavirus flattened, but our hope yes. ever contagious. We yes. thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, man, Devon, again, I want to thank you so much, man, for just taking the time to pour into us. I know this is edifying for everybody. And for all of those who are watching online, I want to thank you all so much for joining. We pray that you guys have left this experience and this conversation with more hope than you had going in and that the hope you have as Devon just finished praying would be contagious. We want to let you know that next week um, we are really, really going to be able to launch what I love, grow, serve looks like. Uh, here at Mount Rubido in the midst of this pandemic. And so we want you about on Monday or Tuesday to go look for the new landing page at Mount Rubido. It's going to let you know when our worship experiences, more our Ruby Talks are going to be taking place, uh, which is going to be on Saturdays, 11 a.m. for our children, 11.30 a.m. for our adults and our teens. Also let you know about our group meetings, what days our groups are meeting, what link you can have to sign up for our small groups for Zoom so that we can still stay connected that way. And then also our drive-bys, when we're doing our drive-bys. Right now, what it looks like, we're packing on Fridays, doing drive-bys on Saturdays for you to get your package of food, hand sanitizers, toilet paper, and anything that we're able to get through that week. But we want you to consistently be checking on the Mount Rubido homepage. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook so we can just give you updates. This thing is changing every single day and we want you to be updated on how it is that we are not simply responding but being proactive to what's happening. So I wanna thank you guys so much for joining us. Look for us to be dropping fresh content on you throughout the week and again, here next Saturday for our Ruby Talk. We love you guys. God bless. And we will see you on next week. Take care. you be flat man I don't know flopman I guess we'll find out Bobby, look what I found champion your house of fat flat man what is it I'm not sure Bobby it appears to be a pamphlet with some kind of Message on Leaving Lazarus, flat man. We gotta figure it out. To the flat cave, Bobby. Okay, Bobby, let's figure out the hidden message on the cover. It says, the gospel. Holy Bible, flat man. Definitely a code. 
what do you think it means? Let's run it through the define a word capacitator and see what we come up with. Great thinking, Flatman. Is anything coming up? Yes, Bobby. It's coming up on the screen now. Great smelly tennis shoe. What does it say? Entered phrase means good news. Information that is positive. The opposite of bad. Something worth knowing. Jogging giraffes, flat man. We have to read. Yes, Bobby. Let's look inside. Hopping hippos. Great idea, black man. <laughs> it says, all have sinned. Parachuting parakeets. That means us, black man. Yes, Bobby, and it does. According to this, we have sinned. What are we going to do? Read on. <laughs> it says the wages of sin is death. Bungee jumping baboons, flat man. We're going There's more. We're going to change from superheroes to super zeros. Bobby, take a chill pill. There's more. That's not the end. Great gooey gumballs, Flatman. I don't think I want to hear anymore. <laughs> it says that God's son, Jesus, died for us. For us? That's what it says. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Golly, flat man. That was very nice of him. He must really love us a lot. I think so, Bobby. But it says we must accept him as our savior, or we'll have to die for our sins ourselves. Great flying toasters, flat man. There's only one thing we can do. What, Bobby? Karate chopping kangaroos, flat man. We must accept Jesus as our savior. Bobby, let's pray. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner. Me too. I'm sorry I've sinned. Me too, me too. Please forgive me and be my savior. Me too, me too, me too. Help me not to sin anymore. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, Bobby, we're saved. Great marauding mice, flat man. That's a change. Usually we do the saving around here. But only Jesus can save people from their sins. Holy Spirit, flat man. That makes Jesus the superest superhero of them all. I hope all these kids have accepted Jesus. I hope so too.